is where you are firing. You are, he is in the bullseye of your target. Might we do something? Might we get him out? So, uh, uh, a, a, a miraculous thing happened. General Washington said, fine, let, let us stop the, the siege um, and we'll bring him out. And so, two British officers uh, under a flag of truce marched out with me and my two sons <laughs> with a flag of truce marched in halfway in and, and I, I walked out with a great deal of information for the American army. <laughs> Cornwallis was, was living with me, but uh, I was fortunate to get out. And then the bombardment started again. It started all over again until my house was turned into rubble. My brick home, fine brick home, was just turned into rubble. Well, that continued on, uh, and the Americans and the French then, uh, as, as sieges proceed, you, you move closer so your guns are more effective. And so they were moving up now to the second line. The one you see here is the second parallel of the Americans and the French. Americans on this side, French on that side. So their, their guns would be more effective. Um, one obstacle, well two, obstacles were in the way. You were speaking about redoubts number 9 and 10. They prevented that line there being completed all the way around. They had to be taken. <coughs> Bombardment can do wonders for breaking down the walls, but you need to go in. You need to go in with infantry. You need to physically take them, and that needed to happen. Now, <coughs> who here on the Allied side knew something about taking earthworks? The, the militia? French. The French professionals. They knew how to do it. They'd done it all of their lives, all of their, their soldierly lives. Well, so General Rochambeau, um, he uh, stepped forward and, and to General Washington he, he said, General Washington, um, we are proud to be here in support of you. And we as professionals, we have great experience in building and conquering fortifications. Give us, sir, the honor of taking readouts 9 and 10 and giving them to you as a gift. And um, General Washington was gracious and he said, uh, General Rochambeau, you are uh, very generous and kind in your offer. And I, I truly appreciate that offer. But how about this? You take 9, we'll take 10. The Americans wanted to show what they could do, of course. And the best of the American troops were selected um, uh, from among the Continental Line. Uh, it was the Light Infantry, uh, commanded by a man whose name you may not know. He, he had been a form, formerly been an aide to General Washington, a fellow by the name of uh, Alexander Hamilton. You don't know him. <laughs> but, but he was commanding the American troops. And um, so 400 French were going to take Redoubt number 9, 400 Americans to take redoubt number 10. Uh, it was at night. It was done at night. Uh, wouldn't you rather go across these grounds at night than uh, an attack than in, during a day? Of course. Um, it was to be as quiet and secret as possible. Of course, at a certain point, you would the surprise would be gone. But uh, to start the attack, the signal for the attack was six artillery uh, uh, rounds to be fired in rapid succession. Bang, 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 bang. That was the sound to be heard to, to start the attack. Well, the Americans went in um, with unloaded muskets. Muskets. Well, they were not allowed that. Their colors were furled. Uh, they had their colors, but they were not allowed to fly their colors. Um, another uh, part of an honorable surrender would be that the, the surrendering army would march out with fifes and drums playing the tune of the victors. An American or a French tune would have been appropriate. They were not allowed that. They had to play a, a British tune and the tune they chose was the world turned upside down. <laughs> and it was turned upside down here. Well, the surrender took place. The enlisted men were marched off to uh, prison camps uh, 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 to the west and to the north. 
um, and the offices of the British and the French, pardon, and the British and the German uh, uh, soldiers, uh, they were given their paroles and they were free to go. They had parties and all sorts of things. They had a very good time. Matter of fact, there's something I ought to tell you about. You're talking about these regulars from mm -hmm. Europe. Uh, it was a protocol and proper procedure for the um, the uh, regular armies after the surrender, after the fighting was over, to do honors to each other. And um, so the French Rochambeau uh, uh, gave a big party for the British uh, officers. Not the Americans. They were not invited. They're not professionals, you see. And uh, protocol would require that Cornwallis would reciprocate. He didn't have his money. He didn't have, his money was in England. And so Rochambeau loaned uh, uh, Cornwallis a hundred thousand pounds to have a big party for the French officers, to which the Americans were not invited. <laughs> our allies and our captives were honoring each other. You, you think more about these regular army uh, types, uh, Talibs. Uh,